Hello, welcome to Chris's quick tips for Google Sheets. Google Sheet dates are numbers, so this makes it very easy to do simple date manipulation by using arithmetic. There are also functions to provide answers to more complex date-related questions. A common date question is what is the date a specific number of days before or after a start date? This question can be answered very easily with Google Sheets by simply using add and subtract. To find the date 40 days after the 7th of August 2020, simply add 40 to the cell with the start date, B3, and the answer is the 16th of September 2020. Similarly, if you want to know the date 10 days before the 7th of March 2020, then simply subtract 10 from the cell containing the start date. 2020 was a leap year with 29 days in February, so you can see that leap years are handled correctly by Google Sheets. If you want to know the number of days between two dates, then you can simply subtract the two dates. The example shows the number of days between the 7th of August and 11th of August. The formula is a simple subtraction of the two cells containing the two dates. This is the simplest way to calculate the number of days between two dates. However, Google Sheets also gives you a couple of functions which do the same job. The days function has two arguments. The first is the end date and the second is the start date. The result is exactly the same as using a simple subtraction. My personal preference is to use the simple subtraction, but if you prefer to use the function, then use the function. There is also another function that can be used for exactly the same calculation, the date diff function. This function has three arguments. The first two are the start date and end date. However, note that these arguments are in the opposite order to the order in the days function. The final argument is the units, which is a one or two character code which specifies the units used, but a lot more on that later. But for this calculation, enter the letter D for the final argument. This gives exactly the same result as the days function and the simple subtraction. In that example, the end date was after the start date, which is the most common situation that you will come across. But there may be some scenarios where the end date could be before the start date, as shown in this example where I have simply swapped the start and end dates around from the first example. If you are using the simple subtraction, then this is not a problem because the result will be minus four days. The days function also handles this scenario and gives minus four days. However, the date diff function cannot handle this scenario and reports an error. So if it is possible that you need your sheet to handle the scenario where the end date is before the start date, then you should not use the date diff function. Use a simple subtraction or the days function. While the date diff function cannot handle this scenario, it is actually an extremely powerful function that allows you to calculate the difference between the two dates in six different ways. The date diff function has three arguments. The first two are the start and end dates, and the final argument specifies how you want to count the difference between the two dates. You specify which method by using a one or two character code in the third argument. The simplest way of counting is D. This is simply the number of days between two dates, provided the end date is the same or after the start date. If the third argument is YD, then the function returns the number of days between the two dates, but ignores the year. So for example, the difference between 27th of February 2020 and the 27th of February 2021 is zero, because ignoring the year, they are both the same date, 27th of February. These examples show how the number of days difference is calculated for three days when the third argument is YD. These three dates are one year later, plus or minus a day, firstly in a leap year, 2020, 
and then in a year that is not a leap year, 2021. In a leap year, there were 366 days, so the number of days between two dates can be zero up to 365 days. The top example shows that the number of days between the 27th of February 2020 and the 26th of February 2021 is 365. If the end date is one day later, so that the end date is now the same date, 27th of February, but one year later, then the date diff with the third argument of YD shows a difference of zero because both are the same date and month and the year is ignored. If the end date is now another day later, so that the end date is one year and one day later, the date diff function will return a difference of one day because the year is ignored. Similarly, in a year that is not a leap year, for example 2021, this example shows that an end date one day before the same date a year later gives a date diff of 364. The same date a year later gives a date diff of 0, and the day after gives a date diff of 1. So date diff with a third argument of yd counts the number of days between two days up to a maximum of the number of days in the year and then restarts to count up from zero again. So it is the number of days between two dates ignoring the year. The result takes leap years into account. Date diff with a third argument of md counts the number of days between two dates, ignoring both the month and the year. So this function will return a value from zero up to one less than the number of days in the month. This example shows the number of days between 27th of February 2021 and the same date in March, which returns a value of zero. This is because both dates are the 27th of the month. Zero will be returned for an end date of the 27th of any month or year. If the end date is the 26th, i.e. the day before one month later, the date diff function returns 27 days. This is because February 2021 is not a leap year, so it has 28 days and the valid range for the number of days is therefore 0 to 27. For the same dates in 2020, which is a leap year, so February has 29 days, the valid range for the number of days is 0 to 28. So the number of days between the 27th of February 2020 and the same date in March is 0. There are 28 days between 27th of February 2020 and the 26th of March 2020, which is one day before one month later. June has 30 days, so the number of days between the 27th of June and the day before one month later, the 26th of July, is 29 days. Date diff can also count the number of months between the start date and the end date and return either the number of months or the number of months ignoring the year. The table shows the count of the number of months increases by one on the same date as the start date in each month. The count starts at zero and increases to one when the end date is the same date in the following month. The date diff with the third argument of m will continue to count the number of months upwards. However, the date diff function with the third argument equal to ym will count the number of months and ignore the year in the start and end date. So in this scenario, the function will count up to 11, then start again from zero. The table shows that when the start date is the 27th of February and the end date is 27th of February a year later, the date diff function with a third argument of m will return 12. But if the third argument is ym, the function will return zero. Similarly, if the end date is one year and one month after the start date, 
the date diff function with a third argument of m will return 13 months, but with a third argument of ym will return one month. The date diff function can count the number of years between the start and end dates. On the same date and month of each year, the count of the number of years will increment by one. The table shows that if the start date is the 27th of February, the count of the number of years increases by one on the 27th of February for each of the following years. At the start of this video, I showed how to calculate the date a specified number of days in the future or the past using simple addition and subtraction. If you want to find the date a specified number of months rather than days in the future or past, then Google Sheets provides the function eDate to do this. The function eDate has two arguments, the start date and the number of months, which can be either positive for months after the start date or negative for months before the start date. The table shows one month after the 28th of January 2020 is the 28th of February. 2020 is a leap year, so one month after the 29th of January is the 29th of February. Note that one month after the 30th and 31st of January is still the 29th of February. One month after the 1st of February is the 1st of March. The eDate function handles the end of year correctly. In this example, one month after a date in December 2020 is the same date at the end of January 2021. Both December and January have 31 days, so the date is the same in the start date and the result of the eDate function. The eDate function can also find the date a number of months before the start date by specifying a negative number in the number of months. In the example, I have looked at one month before dates at the end of March. One month before the 28th of March is the 28th of February, and one month before the 29th of March is the 29th of February 2020. One month before the 30th of March is still the 29th of February, and similarly, one month before the 31st of March is also the 29th of February, which shows that the function correctly handles leap years. Click to watch the playlist containing all the other videos about time and date functions in Google Sheet. There is also a playlist with a lot of videos covering other Google Sheet functions and functionality.